Occasionally, I forget just how long I've been doing this. It's kind of amazing, considering we're here to talk about In Times, the new album from Enslaved, and this is the third album of Enslaved's that we've reviewed on this channel, which is actually not even a quarter of their discography, but even still, considering this channel has been active for only about five years, Enslaved having three albums out in that span is... Well, certainly pretty impressive, especially whenever you consider uh, where the very first album in that three-album cycle, uh, Exoma Ethica Odine, actually landed that year, considering it was number one. It was the album of the year. Uh, Ritia from two years ago didn't exactly fare quite as well, but again, it's kind of hard to get the top spot twice running. But what about In Times? In Times is a six-track album that clocks in at a little bit of under uh, 60 minutes in length. Yeah, six tracks, a little under 60 minutes. These are long songs. There is no song here that is less than eight minutes in length. In fact, there's a track that actually nearly eclipses the 11-minute mark, but not quite. This is actually very similar and kind of following in the style of Retir, which featured a lot of songs uh, that actually pushed the 9-minute boundary and a finale that actually exceeded the 11-minute mark. So this has kind of been how Enslaved's music has gone over the past couple of albums. All of that Viking and black metal heritage has certainly spawned a progressive metal side, something that's been around actually ever since albums such as Monumention, and even whenever you think of albums such as Below the Lights, you can definitely hear the sound starting to present itself even more so. Isa and albums such as uh, Vertebrae only continued on the cycle closer and closer to where we are right now. But if there's one thing that Enslaved really seems to have infused on this disc that perhaps also has kind of been getting some glips and glamours in there, some some moments where it seemed like this was the, the next direction, the next place where this band could really go. It's a little bit of post-metal, a little bit of almost Alsay-like post-metal, which is definitely a nice touch. Now, whenever you think of post-metal, a lot of people think that that's a, a bad thing. It's something that takes things a little bit too atmospherically and just tries to create a landscape and repeat it a little bit in order to, you know, really make something out of nothing. But in reality, whenever you listen to these tracks, there is a grand element of chaos and a grand element of calm that exists throughout all of them, almost as though that harmony is something that definitely brings these tracks together. Well, not almost like, it's exactly what it does. It's something that binds them together almost like glue. Whenever these tracks are chaotic, they're definitely chaotic. They're out of control. They're ones where that those, uh, those, those heritage marks, those lines that they were able to draw very early on in their days certainly, certainly uh, shine forward. And even though this band has evolved and started to influx and infuse further sounds and further different philosophies into their musical landscape, it's something where where they came from, the very bare-bones basics of Enslaved, still bleed through every once in a while and showcase themselves in a mammoth way. The calm side is absolutely magical. It's something that actually brings more of an element to these tracks. It's something that gives it more atmosphere. Imagine a Drudka album, for example, if it didn't have those moments where it just sort of took a step back and kind of let the music do the talking. Considering what a lot of their music is all about, and considering the battles that they're speaking about or the history that they're trying to present, atmosphere and you know use, letting the music do the talking is exceptionally important. Enslaved kind of uses this very similar idea. In Times is a great example of this. The song, the song itself really captivates you with an intro that seems like it's just repeating, but then explodes only to really take you on a roller coaster style journey, both up and down throughout the entire landscape of their musical capabilities, which is something that is then once again showcased off Daylight, the very final track on the album, as it once again illuminates a very, very nice kind of calmed package, uh, a calm center point. Uh, with two bookends of very, very heavy aggression to really set this album off in the right direction. Now, I know I spoke about the last two tracks. The first four are certainly no slouches either. If there's one thing that seems illuminated on this album, aside from what I've already mentioned, it's the clean vocals, the clean singing, that clean voice that is happening. And oh my lord, this is something that actually takes prevalence at times on this album, and it's something that is beautiful. 
the, uh, the, the, the duality of the two vocal styles that are employed on this album create a nice, nice light and darkness style philosophy that clashes nicely just like the music itself does. It's one thing to really have it just be there, just to have it. But these are moments and these are uh, parts of the music that both feel like they have heavy importance and each placement of these feels necessary. Now there are some moments where you're going to sort of see it coming, almost as though Enslaved has has really performed above and beyond the Call of Duty for so long that maybe you're starting to get a hint of the songwriting formula. But every single time that you're caught thinking that you know everything, they throw a surprise at you. They throw something that just takes you off guard. That's what In Times is all about. It's a journey of a lot of the staples that make Enslaved a great band, but with some added incentive and some added bonus features, some new tricks to give the band an even more fresh feel. This is something that actually caused Retir to get a whole lot of praise, considering they've expanded their repertoire even further. However, it was an album that, unlike uh, Axima Ethica Odne, I felt was just not quite as good. I felt that Axima really was the album that showcased uh, really where these changes were coming from a little bit more and was kind of the heralding cry. Now we make it to End Times, and I feel like it's another heralding cry. This is a heralding cry of a band that now can influence a lot more post-metal. They're ones that can use that progressive style in order to take you to a landscape that even goes above and beyond the Call of Duty. This is an extreme metal band that's embracing a side that really showcases where the music itself can speak without words. And that is a great and terrific place for this band to go. It's a placement where they could have already been and in some ways already were at. So it's logical progression. I love Enslaved for the simple fact that they're a band that's not afraid to evolve. They're a band that's not afraid to try a couple things every now and again. They don't have to base an entire album off of it. They don't have to completely change who they are in order for this change to take place. Instead, it's a subtle infusion, something that makes the music a little bit more powerful and have a little bit more of a dynamic range. And that's why a band like this doing that works, but say, oh, we always go back to you know, Morbid Angel, why an album such as that is not able to really do it. What can I say? The last album that we talked about was Stephen Wilson's Hand Cannot Erase, and that was a perfect score. It was 100 out of 100, 10 out of 10, either way in any way that just sliced it, Stephen Wilson painted us a musical masterpiece. Enslaved has, have done their best to kind of do the same thing. It's definitely true that great things or shitty things usually come in threes, so the next album that I listen to is probably poised to be amazing as well. I was going through a stretch there also where I was listening to some stuff that was just kind of average. Think about all that remains and, you know, that little general area, and you'll kind of know where I'm at. But with this album, man oh man, it's definitely one that if Stephen Wilson's album hadn't come out before, it would be probably the contender right now for album of the year, and that would be at a serious 96 out of 100. This is a really, really lofty contender and a great disc. It's one that definitely stays with you, not to mention it's also one where the 60 minutes nearly that this album spans really just kind of fly by. Since it's only six tracks, I feel like that's kind of a part of it, but at the same time, good lord, it's fantastic. What you get within this disc is certainly worth the price of admission, not to mention it's also worth your curiosity. So what did you guys think about In Times by Enslaved? What do you guys think about this band? They're in Music Madness as far as I remember, and if they're not, then that's a crime. What about these guys getting a discography someday? Why don't you also tell me a band that you'd like to see a discography of right underneath your opinion of In Times by Enslaved? Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen at Cover Killer Nation. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya.